This is the MFG Monkey Podcast. We sit down with leaders and innovators in the industry to talk about manufacturing, business, and the stories behind their successes. I'm your host, Dust McMillan, owner and founder of McMillan Co. All right. Welcome, Emily. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Dustin? Oh, good. Just running around. I appreciate you uh, letting me be 30 minutes tardy for today. So thank you again. No way. No worries. Give me more time to prepare. Yeah. Yep. So we, uh, the fun thing is we're working on a pretty big deal right now. And we just went and looked at another, uh, hundred plus thousand square foot building to, uh, do some warehousing for a new customer. So exciting wow. times. That's amazing. Yeah. So why don't you, uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and then we'll, we'll get into it. I think we're going to probably talk all things marketing and, and maybe some other random stuff today. All right. I, uh, my name is Emily Wilkins. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn as Emily Joanne Wilkins. Just there's a couple other of us out, few others out there trying to differentiate, you know, as a marketer, always trying to differentiate. Um, my company is marketing metal and I work specifically with job shops. Um, mostly uh, machine shops, fabrication shops, um, sometimes some robotics integrators, um, prototype companies, things like that. People that are doing custom uh, custom work for larger manufacturers, not selling their own products. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I learned about you through uh, Paul with Pro Shop. So that was yeah. kind of fun. Paul and I did a podcast a couple a few years ago, I guess now. So his uh his market and your market seem to align align pretty well so yes they definitely do i uh i did a workshop for paul last summer and i uh, got like five clients from that workshop so okay. um okay. so yeah i've worked with quite a few of his clients and um i think they're they're a good fit because um you know it's the shops that are really trying to grow and uh, be more efficient and be of better value to their customers and, um, you know, trying to make an impact in their community. Uh, those are the types of, you know, the types of owners that I really like working with. So. Yeah. It's, it's hard to work for or work with an owner if, if they don't want it to evolve. Right. Or they, they're not looking at the, the latest and greatest, whatever, whatever that is, uh, technology or marketing on your end or really anything. Yeah. If somebody's very complacent and, and they're good. It's everywhere do you go? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think those businesses are, you know, they're dying out. If, if you're not growing, you're dying. Yep. And I think Paul said that in your, I listened yes. to your interview as well. <laughs> um, the famous uh, Black Sheep, right? Is that from Black Sheep? Uh, maybe. I haven't seen Black Sheep for a while. So <laughs> I think I would, I think I would have to watch it again. <laughs> yeah. It's a, um, yeah, I'm forgetting Chris Farley. Yeah. His, he's, his dad is runs a manufacturing company. So it's kind of a funny one to watch. Yeah. That actually, uh, took place in Sandusky, Ohio. One of the, okay. one of the famous scenes that with the big dinosaur in the background. So that's pretty close to, uh, my, my place up at the lake there. So it's, it's, pretty funny to to drive by that and and think of Chris Farley he's definitely one of my one of my favorites of all time so what was the <laughs> what was the company uh Callahan Callahan yeah Breaks? Callahan yeah yep break yep. I think it was break pads or something yeah <laughs> yeah break pads so he has a couple other really good quotes in there if you remember them yes <laughs> uh I'm coming up dry at the moment but there are lots of good one-liners. Yeah, I forget how <laughs> the whole thing goes. But he's like, you can take my word for it, or or you can take the butcher's word for it, or you can stick your head up the cow's ass to look at the yeah. ribeye or steak <laughs> or whatever he says. So that was always <laughs> <laughs> always always a classic one. But yeah, so is going back to what you said in the beginning with your LinkedIn. We'll we'll have a link to you, your LinkedIn and in the bio and all that fun stuff on on the podcast. Make it easy for for you to find Emily and contact her and all that fun stuff. So, so going back to the workshop, tell us a little bit 
about the uh, the workshop that you did? Uh, yeah, so it was called Marketing Doesn't Have to Suck, which is also the name of a talk that I've given at uh, FabTech last year. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember if that's, yeah, I think that's the name of, the first talk that I ever gave was at the Advanced Manufacturing Expo in Grand Rapids, okay. Michigan. And um, yeah, it's it's evolved since then, but uh, FabTech was definitely a, uh, you know, a bucket list item. So it was pretty cool to, to do that last year. I'm, I'm waiting to hear if I'm on the list this year, but right. Um, I think so, my prospects are pretty good. good. <laughs> well, and so you did the, the same workshop at fab tech marketing doesn't have to suck. Uh, it was a, more of a talk at fab tech, okay. um, less of a, a workshop, but, um, but yeah, so I was, I kind of, uh, yeah, just made it a little bit more interactive for, sure. Um, for Paul's customers. And um, we had a huge turnout. Um, there were like a hun- over a hundred signups and I think like oh, wow. 40 people were actually, actually there. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and marketing has always been one of my favorite subjects, especially around manufacturing, because there's a very, very small little niche of, of people that I think get, get it when it comes uh, to manufacturing marketing, because it's so much different than marketing a, you know, a dentist or an eye doctor or an ice cream shop or whatever. And everyone seems like all the marketers yeah. that are really, really good at that try to play in the, in the manufacturing space. And they, uh, <clears throat> my experience is you end up teaching them the lingo and, you know, what certain things are, or, you know, it's just, it's six months of just them learning, you know, about manufacturing. So it's, I think it's really cool that, you know, you're focusing all in on, on manufacturing and marketing. Yeah, um, as someone who kind of came up in the manufacturing space, um, my uh, my grandpa was um, retired from a machine shop in Detroit, um, actually a competitor of my husband's grandpa's shop, also in Detroit. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, um, I, you know, my dad had a, he was very mechanical, had his shop in the garage. I used to hang out with him, you know, Tinker and uh, and then my uh, my first uh, co-op job and actually not my first co-op job one of my co-op jobs my, where I did my senior thesis project in college was a fabrication shop okay. um, in Zealand okay. so I I learned a ton in that job and um, you know really had to there were seven people that worked there so it was a really small you know small company I worked directly with the owner and it was a very much like a duct tape marketing kind of figure it out yourself kind of thing um and i've worked uh since then a a lot of my career i was working at small shops like that and um you know really helping the sales team and um figuring out how to you know understanding their customers understanding what makes them different and better and Mm -hmm. um and learning how to communicate those those selling points and um to to ideal customers so sure so did did you yeah. do some marketing with your family's company too or or were they no. open to, <laughs> were they open to it or I was so the company shut down okay. when my okay. grandpa retired and I was like 12 so it was All before right. before my time sadly decent excuse well yeah <laughs> so what sadly. was your what um where did you go to school and then how how did you get into marketing in manufacturing because it's a very unique position i think of all the manufacturers that i know especially you know if they're under 10 million dollars they they don't have a marketing person a long team or really even a sales team right yeah um yeah so i went to kettering university which uh used to be general motors institute um and it's they're famous for uh their co-op programs and um they're uh, mostly focused in engineering and manufacturing. So, um, so my, and my mom teaches there. So that's kind of how I ended up going there. Oh, um, wow. and so she's a calculus professor and she was an electrical engineer before that. Um, my, my dad is a, a technician. He did a lot of like testing vehicle testing and stuff for GM. Okay. Um, 
So yeah, tons of manufacturing in my in my family. Uh, my sister also graduated from Kettering as an industrial engineer. My husband is an industrial engineer. Uh, we met <laughs> at Kettering, so um, so I, I speak the language, and you know, it it definitely helps to have um, Justin, my my husband, just to be mm -hmm. able to like talk through things with him, and you know, because he's always like he's the one sourcing, <laughs> you know, sourcing okay. parts from yeah. these companies. So. Um, just being able to bounce things off them and, you know, make sure I'm getting the language right. And <laughs> right. So. Well, and, and traditional marketing is so much about playing into the emotions of, of your audience mm -hmm. and manufacturing. I mean, what, I mean, there are emotions there when you play into on time delivery and, and quality mm -hmm. and people's livelihood. I mean, you can certainly play into the emotion, but yeah. it's definitely not the same emotion of, you know, Dairy Queen. No, no, it's not. But but you're right. There there is a lot of emotion involved in that purchasing process. Even mm -hmm. you know, as much as these like technical uh, buyers like to think that they <laughs> are, you know, using their logic mostly in their decision making, it's um, there can still be a lot of emotion behind it. So, um, and and especially in these days of you know AI and and overseas uh suppliers and you know just it, it's even more important now than it ever has to really bring that personality forward and mm. show that you know you care yeah for you care right it's yep. it's important to show that you care and that you're different because you care yeah and and i think the manufacturers that get that um they they're they're just above you know they're a step yeah. ahead of everyone not not above but a step ahead head of everyone and I, and one of my good buddies uh that that we've worked with for quite a while Jamie McGregor McGregor Metals CEO they're you know they're a big metal stamping company and, and he stands in front of his team and and he's like you know when when you work for us you see me at Kroger walking around I buy my meat from the same store that you buy your meat from and and that's why McGregor Metals is such a great place to work it's not run by you know a Japanese company that you you're never going to meet the owner and you know that goes kind of away from marketing a little bit but not really because no. now you have you know if he has 500 people in his facility he's got 500 bird dogs that are out there talking about how how great mcgregor metals is and and we're doing it right now we're talking about it and it just you know popped in right. my head you know listening yeah. to jamie's annual meeting last year and and that's big i mean when you have a, an owner of a company that you know, doesn't hide behind the curtains and, you know, playing Wizard yeah. of Oz and, and you're engaged in your, <laughs> in your people, you know, those, those people are going to talk about that. And it helps with the people that you recruit to work at your company and, and the things that you're able oh, to yeah. do and they naturally care more. And, and I th think that, you know, that really buys into the emotional aspect of manufacturing too, that you can certainly talk about with the customer, you know, when your salespeople are out there, like, Hey, our, our people do care. They want to be on time. It's not, you know, they're yeah. clocking in and clocking out just for a paycheck, but they, they care that your parts show up to your facility on time. Oh yeah. 100%. That, I mean, that's just great branding is what that is. You yes. know, it's, they're branding themselves as a company that cares and that's part of the community and yep. that, and that's so important. Yeah. So one of the things that I, you know, I was reading through your bio on your LinkedIn and outside of marketing and that doesn't suck. What was it? There's something <laughs> something else in here that I found found funny. And now that I'm looking for it, I won't be able to find it. But it was <laughs> I, like I just like your your language and how how you talk about it because it it is real, you know, and, and all of us are, you know, we talk the talk a different language and, and things like that. But uh it is it's just it's a different it, I wish I could find it and I'm fumbling here. Was it but, the unnecessary and unnecessary shit? I think you mentioned yes, that. Yes, necessary and unnecessary <laughs> shit. <laughs> yes. I mean, what a what a better point, but we do we we really evaluate what, you know, what we're doing and I've fallen into it. I, you know, I I feel I love marketing and we, you know, we've went through periods of times where we've done things that work and then all of a sudden they don't work anymore. So now we're doing unnecessary shit. So then you have to figure out the necessary shit to, you know, to get it to start working again. So um, yeah. what are some of those things that you've seen over the years? 
Yeah. So, um, I mean, some of the necessary things we talked about already, like having a really strong brand and, um, having a personality Mm -hmm. and being, you know, being real and not like trying to be put buttoned up and, you know, just boring. I mean, there's so many just boring, mundane, terrible job shop websites out there. And, and, you know, the website is important. That's when, when people are doing uh, research and even if they know of you already, they're, they're going to look at your website to see, Mm -hmm. you know, just to check you out and see what else they can find. And um, so, you know, if you don't have that, um, if it's not memorable and interesting and Mm -hmm. if it doesn't reflect your true value that you bring to the table, then it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, so the other thing that is really important to me and where I, I saw a really big opportunity was the process of, um, of having a website built or, you know, doing any sort of marketing, um, as a job shop is, was painful. It's, um, I've been on both sides of it and there just was such a break in communication and, uh, you know, it's just this back, back and forth email chains forever and ever. And they drag on the customer doesn't, uh, you know, from an agent agency standpoint, the, the client, uh, you know, doesn't get back to you on with the details that you need and, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then vice versa, like the, <laughs> the client is waiting forever for the agency to, you know, by that time they have five other projects that they're working on and yours falls to the wayside, whatever. Like, it's just this, it ends up being this really long drawn out painful process. Yeah. And, um, so I, I actually learned this from a, um, a business coach that I, I still work with my, um, I don't know if you can see, see my bag in the background, the no BS. Um, <laughs> so that's my, um, my business coach, uh, Pia Silva kind of developed this process that is, um, their intensive processes. So, um, instead of, you know, working on several projects at once, we focus on one project at a time. So, um, we, I, I do this thing called the setup in the beginning where I really get to know the customer, try to understand what their needs are, um, really identify what their brand needs to look like and what their, what their marketing should be. And, um, I, I help them, you know, I give them advice on how to be more effective with outreach and find, you know, finding the right customers and positioning themselves to be the, the go-to for those customers. Sure. Um, so then our intensive process is, um, from the customer's perspective, uh, we only spend about a day to three days of their time, depending on if we're doing like photography and video, um, as part of the project. Um, and we kind of, kind of build everything ahead based on what they, you know, based on what we picked up in the setup process. Um, Mm -hmm. I get, try to get really clear on what they're looking for, what they like, what they don't like um, understanding their personalities. And then, um, so we build everything ahead and then present it to them, go through and make changes on the spot. Um, and then we launch it together and I, I teach them how to use everything that we built. We, um, unlike the majority of agencies, we build in Squarespace, um, so that it's really easy for them to manage. Uh, you know, they don't have to worry about plugins breaking all the time and trying to figure out where the frick to (laughs) <laughs> to right. make changes to things, you know, it's, it's really simple interface. Um, and then we also, uh, as much as we can, we use, uh, Canva to build like graphics and things like templates and stuff for them to use. Even their, uh, brochures a lot of times we'll do in Canva so that, you know, down the road, when they get a new piece of equipment, they can just add it themselves and they don't need to reach out to us. Um, so they're, I, I really try to help them get everything that they need um, to be successful so that they're not having to call us all the time, which is like right. opposite of what most agencies do. You know, like they want you to rely on them, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. So. I, and, and yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, I I see both both sides of it pretty, pretty good. And I mean, it's, I have no idea how to change anything that we do. And I mean, we're guilty of it. If I, if I need something changed to our brochure, we have to call the marketing company to do it. There's no way. Yeah. One, I don't even have the, the design file to even make the change 
myself, even if I knew how, let alone yeah. go into our website and make a change. And, and you and I talked offline a little bit about, you know, we're building out a new website. I think we're on month 11, which is oh my God. the most painful thing that I've ever done. Uh, very, very <laughs> frustrating, especially when you're jumping on the phone call week after week, explaining the same things over and over again. And it's, yeah, yeah it's tedious for sure. And it's, yeah. And it's unnecessary shit. It's like, that is I, unnecessary I, shit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's it, probably one of the things that frustrates me the most is doing things over and over that I've already done. I mean, it's, yep. it's like, come, <laughs> come on, we've, we've talked about this like five weeks in a row. Why isn't it, you know, yeah. oh, we forgot or we didn't think that it was important or, you know, whatever it is. And it's, it's just, it's painful. Um, painful. In the opportunity cost is unknown. I mean, if you should have mm-hmm. launched something six months ago, who yeah. knows what that website would have done in those six months that it's still, you know, yeah. on the back burner getting worked on constantly. Um, yeah. So, it, I mean, it's it's important. Websites are, are important. I, I think that um, a lot of people undervalue a website uh, just from the communication aspect of, you know, talking about your company and what you can do. It's a visual aid for somebody to go and see, you know, what you're actually doing. Uh, the marketing and branding piece online, just people finding you, whether it's, you know, them finding you on ThomasNet and then going to your website and going, okay, well, you know, this really clarifies what they're doing even more. And then they, you know, they're, they're converting on your website. I, I don't know of anything else that's probably more important. um, Yeah. You know, on a marketing standpoint is, is a website. Would you agree with that or, or, Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, even, um, you know, even as social media gets more and more important, it's still, your website's still the hub, you know, it's still where, um, especially in, in this manufacturing space, like that's where people are going to go look. Um, and, and just the brand as a whole, like having something that your team is proud of having something that the owner or whoever your sales person is if you have one is Mm -hmm. is proud to share like that changes the game for you as as a representative of the company too you know you're you're excited to show people you're like wow hey look at this company that i work for or or, hey you know i think we would be a great partner for you here's our website and and being proud to do that and not like uh, not like you know, embarrassed, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. it's it yeah. just changes the conversation so much. And, and and I can relate with that because over the last year, I find myself going. Well, they're like, "Well, what's your website?" I'm like, "Well, it's this." But when you go but... there, it really doesn't reflect <laughs> what we do today. It reflects what we did, you know, eight years ago. Um, oh, yeah. And here's, you know, we've evolved over the time, and and you know, our website really doesn't reflect what we're doing. And I find myself like going into this explanation where it's like, yeah go to our website, go to this page. It'll show you exactly like, you know, you're yeah. just like another company that we work for and this is how we help them. And here's, you know, a white paper on it. And, and that conversation is way different by, by the time yeah. I get into like the 30 or 45 second mark of me justifying why my website sucks, they're, they're checked <laughs> out. And I'm like, God, this is, this is even a whole nother level of, of pain here. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I totally agree. I'm sorry agree. that you're going yeah. through that. <laughs> no, it, it, I feel so it, bad. It, I wish we had met a year ago. <laughs> me too. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, it is, it's, it's, um, that conversation is way different. And, and even more importantly with, uh, you know, salespeople, you know, out in the, you know, out in the field and I grew up in sales and that's kind of, you know, what I really enjoy doing. And I probably spend way too much time doing that, but <laughs> it, it is, it is very important to have good content and good, yep. you know, good websites. And you can be on the phone with somebody and say, Hey, go to this, you know, go to this page on our website and, you know, learn more about us instead of yeah. explaining how it doesn't talk about what you do anymore. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And you mentioned um, like a white paper case study too. Mm-hmm. We've uh, sometimes we've done uh, video case studies, which are awesome as well. Mm-hmm. Um, actually going on site to their, my customer's customer, you know, and asking them a bunch of questions about their process, working with my customer and how yeah. that turned out for them and how it, you know, alleviated pain for them. And um, those, those pieces of content are just invaluable. I mean, oh, they're absolutely. It's so nice to be able to say, here, 
this customer is just like you guys check them out like sure just, you know don't take it from me take it from our, yeah. our customer yeah. right yeah and in, um, in the educational piece with with video right? and yeah i mean there i i also believe strongly in education is the most powerful marketing that you can do if you're teaching yeah. and and talking to somebody about how things are done instead of telling them about how great you are it's far more powerful yeah yeah for sure what um what's the most fun video that you've done oh man we've we've done some really cool ones i um i was just working on a a case study for uh, uh replacement brush panels um okay. so okay. they do uh, brush panels for uh, the turrets in like stamping and punching mm -hmm. machines. Okay. Um, and you know they have a really unique uh, value proposition of like they're one of the only U.S. suppliers, like domestic suppliers of these panels. And mm -hmm. um, most fabricators are used to having to go through the OEM, which a lot of times they're overseas, and um, you know they're they're focused on selling machines, not so much on helping customers get replacement panels so mm -hmm. um so the the process is just really slow and uh and frustrating and uh especially since covid you know the the lead times have been just insane and um so just showing that um again bringing out their personality showing like hey mm -hmm. we're we're mm -hmm. hands-on with this we went on site again with their one of their customers showing a lot of interaction with them and the customer of you know what that's a differentiator for them because they're here they're on mm -hmm. site they're going to come and find out what you need and make sure that you and make sure that you get it um so that one's fresh in my mind because i was just working on the, sure. the case study for that but um but probably one of my favorite ones actually uh was this uh this past fall i worked with um ian stork of stork filmworks um amazing amazing videographer um uh, producer and we um we did a series of vi videos for a company called Cogitic that makes uh machined massive machined components for submarines oh wow um yeah so there uh it was super like visually striking seeing you know these huge machines and the massive parts that they're making inside of them you know ball valves that are like right. <laughs> bigger than you know <laughs> bigger than a doorway so um so that was really cool and we did um we did like a company overview video and then we did kind of a careers focus like who we are video um and then there were three um uh customer or sorry um team highlight videos so we like interviewed their team uh three people from their team on what they like about working there and um and the, one of them in particular is just like, ah, oh, this is so amazing. Like, this is exactly <laughs> what I needed you to say. <laughs> like, you, you rock. Thank you so much for for giving such a great interview. You know, so yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just really cool seeing. You know, you would. That's not something that you would think of that a machine shop would would specialize in is like submarine parts, but they do, yeah. and and they are great at it and um, building a really cool company. So yeah, it is machine shops are so much fun and i i was just talking about this yesterday actually um there's one of my buddies he's a, a chiropractor and and we're both into guns and we like to shoot and and have broken i don't know how many different targets and one of his <laughs> clients owns a machine shop and we were talking about making a different target that doesn't break as easy and so we met yesterday at his machine shop and he was doing stuff in there for the military that was just mind blowing. Yeah. And when you walk into it, you either, I think you have probably three different kinds of machine shops. One looks like a, a hospital and it's, <laughs> yeah. and it, everything is perfectly so clean. clean and, and amazing. Right. And, and you walk in and you're like, holy cow, you're manufacturing in here, which is yeah. so much different than old school machine oh, shop. Yeah. And then you still have the old school machine shop that right. guys are smoking at the machine and the ceiling's <laughs> kind of crusty and the floor's covered with, with cutting oil and, and chips everywhere. And mm -hmm. that's kind of like this place it was, you walk in you're like, what, what is this guy making in here? Nails? I mean, there, there can't, certainly can't be anything, you know, very uh, high tech in here. And he was making right. some of the hardest components for guns in this place that I had ever seen before. 
And I'm oh, like, yeah. holy cow. And he's like, yeah, we're the only ones that can do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, I guess, you know, there's something <laughs> to be said for it. And they're still operating off of, off of paper. Uh, you know, Paul's mind would probably explode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, they were doing, <laughs> doing an amazing job. They're getting things out on time. He's like, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Kind of a, kind of an attitude. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, yeah, it, if you could go in there and, and show what those guys are doing, I mean, it's just incredible. Um, and I, I, I don't know, it's just, it's a lot of fun to, to be in those, those places, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had customers that are like that too, or they've, you know, the shop have, has been there forever and mm -hmm. they have some really cool old machines that they still use for yeah. stuff because yeah. they, because they're a job job, they do really low volume stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it doesn't make sense for them to upgrade. And, um, but yeah, again, they're like super specialized in what they do. And, um, it, yeah, one of the only companies and <laughs> small companies, especially that are doing yeah. this kind of yeah. stuff. So yeah, it's cool. And it, and it is neat. I have one of my buddies, I don't, I want to say the name of the company, but I, I'm going to butcher it. So I'm just going to not do it, but they recycle <laughs> precious metals. And mm. I, it, it, he's turned into one of my best friends and we start going around to each other's companies and, and checking out what each other do. You know, we spend so much time, you know, hanging out and that. Yeah. And he recycles precious metals, titaniums and, you know, all kinds of crazy alloys. There's a few alloys that they can recycle that nobody else in the world can, can get off of a jet engine. And, oh. and I'm like in my head, I'm envisioning, you know, people with saws and grinders and all this crazy stuff, you know, recycling metal. And it's like a chemist, a chemistry lab, yeah. you know, it, yeah. it's mind blowing, you know, how they're using different chemicals to extract the metals out of, uh, you know, out of these jet engine parts and they have these huge fighter jet engines, like just sitting in their shop, which is, I don't so know, weird. pretty, pretty cool to me. They're the size of a school bus. And he's like, yeah, cool. we just cut these things down and then, you know, do the chemistry thing to them. And we ended up with, you know, grams of recycled material out of this huge jet engine. And Jeez. it's pretty, pretty mind blowing. It is crazy. Yeah. But I guess when you're the only one in the world that can do it, you don't, need to market a whole lot right yeah i guess so <laughs> <laughs> maybe, i mean maybe. and that's a, that's a big part of what i help my customers with too is mm -hmm. you know what are you really good at that that other people can't do sure because that's that's where you need to focus a lot of them you know kind of get stuck in that trap of like taking on whatever projects come in and yeah we'll figure it out we can we can make mm -hmm. it work we can make whatever you know but yeah. really specializing in something, um, you know, that's where you really set yourself apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're, I mean, we're certainly guilty of that. Just, you know, you get a project <laughs> in, you focus on how to do it. And, and, you know, we've done a couple projects that you're, you know, making my mind wonder that we were told, you know, we couldn't do it. We were the fifth person that they came to because nobody else was able to do it. I'm like, you know, maybe it was my ego, but I'm like, we're figuring this shit out. <laughs> we we are going to figure out how to do this and and in in a couple of two or three instances we were really able to to figure it out and and we should probably tell that story but yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but that's the fun part of this for me is you know, is uh just talking through those things and and picking the minds of of you know people like you and especially in the mm -hmm. in the marketing and the things yeah. Yeah. It's cool that you have other shop owners that you talk to too. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I mentioned that, uh, the no BS program that I'm in, it's, it, it really has changed the game for me to have other agency owners that are doing, uh, doing work in a similar way as I am and, mm -hmm. and also focusing in their unique niches that are very different from mine. Yeah. Um, but you know, being able to talk, talk through problems with them and, um, you know, so much of it is like just mindset things, mm -hmm. right. You know, you just get stuck in your own head and, um, just being able to kind of talk through those things with other owners is, um, it's really, really game changing. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I, I belong to a Vistage group and it is, it is a game changer. Uh, one of my buddies, 
uh, Kai Fell, Kai owns um, um, an aluminum sand casting company out in California, probably one of the the best in the world. And, you know, we were struggling with some things and we were having beers and he's like, dude, you need to look at, you know, look into Vistage and, and, you know, instead of you running everything across like family and, you know, trying to figure out who in your organization you can trust to talk to, he's like, you know, go, go talk to this group. It's all business owners. You know, there's guys in my group that are, you know, doing well over $500 million and, and to have that guy's ear for, even if it's once a month for 10, 10 minutes, it's invaluable, yeah. you know? Yeah. It, so certainly I can definitely appreciate, you know, having a group to go to, to talk to, to, to bounce ideas off of. And it, and it doesn't always have to be a technical, I mean, it could be a personal issue yeah. that you're having or, you know, who, who knows what it could be. And it's, it is, it, it's invaluable to have somebody that's in a, in a similar situation that you're in now that, you know, they're 50 years ahead of you or 40 years ahead of you. Uh, yeah. But to have that person, you know, kind of guide you or mentor you is, is certainly invaluable. And I, and I, for me, it was, uh, it was very intimidating to go into a room with, yeah. you know, folks that are just, you know, you like, why am I even here? You know, you're <laughs> doing 500 million. I'm nowhere even close to that. And, yeah. and they, you know, they, you're just a different, you know, they welcome you with open arms. So it's definitely yeah. if, you, if you don't have it go get it <laughs> I, I think yeah. for sure yeah yeah it's I've learned so much from them um yeah. just, you know so much <laughs> so what are let's a couple tips that you could you could give for free not giving away the farm what, what are <laughs> we brought up social media and I've I've always um either love it or hate it or you don't know what to do with it um yeah and I I mean, for me, I've always found LinkedIn is invaluable. I mean, that's how you and I connected, right? Through LinkedIn. We yeah. never yeah. met each other except through through LinkedIn. Uh, we've done stuff, you know, I think Instagram is, is a great one because it's videos. You can show yeah. things being made. It's a cool place where you can put little, you know, clips and videos and, and things like that. The one thing that I thought was absolutely ridiculous was TikTok. Um, and I, like, I have a TikTok account and I shot a video of, of a stamping machine, just stamping out a, a blank and mm-hmm. these parts are falling off the machine. I think we have over a million views on it. <laughs> I'm like, how the hell does this thing get a million views? We couldn't try it. I mean, it was the dumbest video. It's like 30 seconds long of just a clip with a stamping machine, stamping and parts falling off. That's it. Uh-huh. And it gets a million views. And <laughs> I'm like, we couldn't, we couldn't shoot. You've spent $30,000 on a video and maybe yeah. get it 30, you know, a million views on it. So yeah. it's like the, it's the things that are for me, it's, um, that you don't think that are going to work that are like, okay, that worked weird. Yeah. 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 Uh, they're, yeah. TikTok's a funny animal, but, um, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, there's no way f- for you, I, I will just say like, there's, there's no way to know um, if any of those million views are actually potential customers. Oh, right? absolutely not. It could be like, you know, some <laughs> unless, unless somebody comes old... to you and says, Hey, I saw you on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally agree. I mean, it could be all 14 year old, you know, right. kids that are really interested in manufacturing. Then that's, you know, there's a million of them out there, which, which is fine. It was just, crazy that we got a million views off of it but yeah you're absolutely right it's intangible you can't you can't track it yeah yeah so you had asked about tips um and we talked a little bit about linkedin and tiktok and um yeah i mean it's you it's hard to quantify what some of those things do um and what you know if customers are seeing them um there there are tracking things that you can use obviously you Mm. can um you know you can track if somebody clicked on your linkedin profile to go to your website or you know clicked on a a linkedin post but um it's hard to quantify but it you're getting yourself out there you know Mm. if if you're putting yourself out there then people are going to start to notice um and it will eventually get into the right hands like Mm -hmm. the the algorithms are set up to show people things that they're interested in so um you know because they 
they want you to keep coming back to the platform. So they're going to keep showing you things that you're interested in. So if you're showing stuff that, you know, that your potential customer is going to care about, then it's, it's likely that they'll, Mm -hmm. they'll see it. Um, I will say like LinkedIn, especially is, um, you know, a lot, I think a lot of owners want to just, you know, hire somebody to post stuff for them and not have to think about it or worry about it or look at it. Um, in, in the case of LinkedIn, especially it's, it's hard to do that. I think that where the value really comes from LinkedIn is, is the connections and, Mm -hmm. and interacting with the people that you meet there, you know, creating those human connections through a digital channel. Um, it's, you know, just commenting on someone else's post or, um, saying something interesting, those things go a long way. Yeah. Um, even if, so the, uh, one of the ways that I built my business, um, before I really got serious about post, like sharing my own stuff on LinkedIn and, um, you know, doing more of these podcasts and kind of becoming positioning myself as more of an expert, right. Mm -hmm. Um, was just doing out warm outreach on LinkedIn, like not necessarily, you know, I wasn't like looking for potential prospects really. I was just reaching out to my network and saying like, Hey, let's have a catch up call. I haven't talked to you in a while. And then in the course of the conversation saying, well, you know, this is what I'm doing now. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, if you run into any of anyone that sounds like they might be a good fit because I'm being very specific with, with who my customer is. Right. Right. So, so if you're being specific and memorable and you're a genuinely kind person who wants to help and you are helping, right. You know, you're reciprocating, um, then you'll get referrals. I mean, I, Mm -hmm. I just got one last week that is potentially going to be a really great customer from, a friend that I made on LinkedIn. <laughs> so, right. yeah. um, you know, it's, those connections are um, invaluable. And again, they're, it's hard to quantify them and it's hard to say which ones are going to turn into something. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can't really go into it with that, like ROI mentality. Um, but, but if you keep showing up and keep doing it, you'll see results. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree. I mean, I, I don't know if you, uh, uh know Matt from MRS Machine and um Yes, Matt goes yeah, I love Matt. Yeah. Goosey, Matt, <laughs> Matt and I did a podcast. Matt and I met on LinkedIn. I feel like we're talking about a dating site. Um <laughs> <laughs> so, but he he like reached out to me. He's like, hey, I you know really like what you guys are doing. He's like, we have a, this machine shop. If you ever need, you know, any anyone look at anything, you know, check us out. And I, I ended up driving up to his shop, which is extremely impressive. And cool, yeah. he's, he's done some work with us and, and it was all through LinkedIn and it's been, yep. I don't know, five years ago that I met Matt yeah. and he's, I mean, he is, he's just, he's a great guy and he knows yeah. what he's doing and his story is a lot of fun and, and things like mm-hmm. that. So yeah, yeah. Link, LinkedIn is definitely, I mean, you'll see tangible results, just, you know, just reps getting out there and. Yep. and making connections agreed so yeah. um yeah and again the more specific and memorable yep. you can be yep. you know the more human you can be in mm-hmm. <laughs> right Sh- sharing your not just your work stuff but personal stuff and showing that you're like a real person with personality not some bot right yeah um it's yeah it goes a long way it, it and i and i love the thought of that there's it was years ago and i when i was working at a company and we were redoing our website and i'm like should we put our pictures you know management team should we should we put our pictures and a little bio about us on on the website and and uh the president of the company is like we're not publicly traded he's like why would we do that and i'm like i don't know make it you know so somebody goes to our website and sees your face or you know people in in the company instead of having a a stock image like you know, they come to visit and they're like, Oh, I, I recognize you. I've seen you on, you know, on the, on your website. And I yeah. didn't even think you were real. I thought you were a stock image, but you right. know, I, I think that, <laughs> uh, you know, that's a really, really good point to have, you know, that personality. I, I love it. 
Yeah. Yeah. And personal posts on LinkedIn, like mm -hmm. even though it's a business platform, your personal posts are likely going to perform better than your business posts. For example, almost always. <laughs> well, I mean like a personal yeah. post, like here's a picture of my dog Gustav and yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's the ones that are like, uh, I think the, the posts that I've gotten most traction on are like the ones where I'm talking about my struggles with Crohn's disease and the, you know, I, I had a really serious, um, life threatening surgery, uh, wow. six years ago. And, um, you know, when I, when I post about that, I, I get so many comments like, just people, you know, um, inspired by my, yeah. you know, <laughs> my outlook on things and what yeah. I was, you know, what I took from that experience and, um, and, and relating to it, you know, like, sure. oh, my, sure. my friend has this or my mom has Crohn's disease or, you know, and it's the, that, those connections, that's what people yeah. care about. Um, you know, people want to do business with people and yeah. yes, yes, we may be trying to you know, grow our businesses, but it's the people behind the business that matter. Sure. That's a very interesting point. And I, I'm so private that I, you know, even know. on Facebook, <laughs> I barely post anything, you know, people, yeah. other people will post things and, and that's really what fills up my, you know, my Facebook, but um, <laughs> I would never, I just like my personality. Like I, I wouldn't post yeah. something like that, but I can certainly see, you know, how it would be very impactful. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's not for everyone, and sure. and I go through phases. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been uh, I've been kind of hiding under a rock for the last couple months, but, <laughs> no, but now I have but like I, assistants that kind of that put stuff out for me. So that's nice. yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I I think it's great. I love what you're doing. Um, obviously, what you're doing is getting attention. Just you know, with us meeting and and things like that. So I mean, that's proof in the pudding right there. Is just you know, our connection is because we are active on, on LinkedIn and, and mm -hmm. who knows what, you know, this will bring, you know, just like doing the podcast and us sharing it, I, you know, we, uh, didn't do video for a long time and, and we just switched platforms and they're like, dude, video gets so many view views. I'm like, from just yeah. YouTube, like we'll post it on YouTube. Like, yeah, yeah, it'll get more views than probably listens. And I'm like, okay, oh, yeah. well. It's just interesting to me, you know, somebody will sit and watch two people, you know, in a video yeah. talking instead of just listening to it, driving down the road, you know, yeah. on a podcast, but you know, people, it, it, people like to see people. Yep. Yeah. Faces. When you have faces in your videos, they're going to do better. Right. Absolutely. Or, well, is there any, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, any, anything that we're missing that you wanted to talk about? Um, I have a workshop coming up at the end awesome. of March. Um, it's a different one than what I did for Paul, um, but I've, I've given it before. It's actually a LinkedIn workshop. So okay. um, talking about that warm outreach process that I mentioned and how to get really specific about your, uh, your message and your custom, your target customer and um, uh, yeah, really dial in your, your message and make it interesting and memorable okay. and, We'll um, yeah. tell everyone how they can find the workshop. We'll, we'll certainly post a snippet and, uh, but tell everyone how they can find it and what's involved. Yeah. Um, we'll be announcing it on our, on marketing metals, LinkedIn channel. I'm sure I'll share it on my personal one as well. Um, and then there'll be a link, the, the learn more link at marketing metals, on marketing metals page. will have a, a link to sign up. So. Okay. probably next week well by the time this is out i think it'll be okay <laughs> be live so <laughs> you also said something about a um a book i am writing a book <laughs> <laughs> i'm That's uh, awesome. yeah still trying to wrap my head around that but um yeah <laughs> i'm writing a book so i've um you know they say, uh, that's like a saying, right? Like I could write the book on it. So I, yeah. I, I could write the book on job shop marketing, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, I, I can't wait to, uh, to hear about it. Send me one or send me the audio feed and, and when it launches, let's jump back on and talk about the book. 
yeah yeah for sure it's definitely cool. going to be at least another year but <laughs> okay well all good things come with time right yes good things come with time awesome. um oh and i i forgot to mention our workshop um do you know eddie saunders jr i do not um he's another industrial marketer um okay and okay. he worked for flex machine tools for a long time um okay. he's right started his own agency recently um but he's gonna um hop on as co-host so that'll be the first time that we've done that for my i've i've done this workshop before so it'll be the first okay, time i've cool. had him on there so yeah and, and i've never done a workshop one and it's through linkedin or it's through your own website um it's uh it's like a google meet link um so oh, it'll okay. be a, a video call and um it is a little bit um interactive like we um Kind of go around and introduce ourselves sure. and ask questions and answer okay. questions so yeah cool well, i can't wait to check it out awesome well thanks again i i mean i'm sure we could sit here and keep finding subjects to talk about but um i i again i love what you're doing um i think your personality is fun and and definitely you're very passionate for what you do so that makes it even more fun well thank you Try to make it fun. If it's not fun, then it's not worth it. (laughs) If it's not fun, then what's the point? Yeah, no, I agree. Go, go figure out something that's fun that you enjoy doing. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine getting up every day and doing something that I absolutely hate. I I mean, there's a lot of people that do it. Yeah. I I don't understand those people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think that's a good place to end. (laughs) well thank you so much for having me i appreciate it absolutely thanks everyone for joining us for this episode of mfg monkey if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes please email them to us at info at mfgmonkey.com